All right, so now we're going to go over everything about how these new pop-ups work in AppMaker. If you missed the intro video, I'm going to go ahead and link that below so that you can go back and click that. That's where I just kind of do a walkthrough of how all these different things work and they look on the screen in the app when you're running it. But today in this app, what I want to do is we're going to go uh, pop-up by pop-up. I'm going to show you how these things do, uh, they actually work and how I implemented them here so you can actually get in there and implement them in your own apps. So what we have here is I've got a page called pop-ups that's just got some, some different things in here. I've got a menu, I've got some buttons in here that to launch these. And of course, all these pop-ups can be launched from some kind of activity that's going on, like say your data is loading or your data finishes loading or some kind of error happened. Um, you can run them programmatically and have them work that way too. But just to make this simple, I used a couple of buttons to actually set them up. Now, you create them, they're, they're really simple. It's just in the Pages menu. We just click on the plus key here, and we have this new pop-up section right here where we click pop-ups, and we click next, and then you can see the five different pop-ups that we can make from here. Um, there's this one here that I guess is, is really kind of the, uh, I guess what you call the sixth one. Uh, it's just an empty pop-up. This is basically the dialogue that we had before. It just kind of pops up and, and does that kind of thing. So. Um, we won't really go into that one very much at all. But the, here's the, here's the pop-ups that we have that are really exciting. And we just select whichever one it is, and then we just hit the Create button. Now I've already created them here uh, on the page, so uh, you can just go into them one by one. So the first one we want to start with here is we'll go to this Notifications dialog. And I'll just open the page. And you can see here, it's kind of a little bit down at the bottom. I'll scroll it up a little bit here. Um, it's just this hovering box in the middle of the page. Uh, when we create one, it comes with just some default text. I, of course, changed this text, uh, but you know, it's just a matter of just clicking on the box. We've got um, here, we've got a widget. And you can, of course, you can customize these further. You can add more widgets to these. But just as, as a basic, you know, we've got uh, a label here and then, a, and then a text box down here, or a text area down here, so that we're able to put some custom things in there. Um, let's go over some of the basics of how this thing is set up. So I'm here at the, this is the, I clicked on the, the lowest breadcrumb here. So this is the base of the page. Um, and so they're a little bit different in the pop-ups. So we can, of course, change the name to whatever we want. But we can also choose things like we can change it to, um, say, top. And that's going to move it up to the top. And we could also do things like move it to the left. And now it's going to be way over there at the left when it pops up. So we're able to kind of, you know, set it to... Uh, some of those areas. I like mine in the center, but you know, you might like yours somewhere at the top or, or to one side or the other, depending on what your content is or what you're trying to hide behind it and that kind of thing. So that's how we, how we align it. The next part is these checkboxes here. So they allow us to do several different things. So uh, we click outside of it. That way, if you, if you don't want to click on some kind of activity in the actual pop-up, we could just click on somewhere outside of it and it'll close. Uh, or if we navigate to a different page, it's going to close. Um, we can also check this box that has glass. And what that will do is it does that graying out of the rest of the screen so that it's, it's really hard. to it, It's not hard. You can see through it like glass, but it's like frosted glass. So uh, it has that kind of effect to it, which is kind of nice depending on how you want to you know, present the pop-up. If you really want it to stand out, then you, you might use the glass, it has glass feature. Uh, and then of course, this escape to close just you know, essentially means you hit the escape key and it's gonna close it through that activity. So those are the settings. Uh, there's the only other setting we really have. You can of course add custom properties like you would with any page. Uh, and then there's a couple of these performance settings just basically have to do with it when it loads. Uh, you might want to change those around, but probably not. The uh, the animations is kind of cool, though, because what we can do from here is we, we have a lot of selections, so we can have it slide in from the left, from the right, from the bottom, from the top, and then we can also just have it fade, which it kind of just starts from the center and just kind of fades in to view, which is kind of cool. Um, and that's that's really all there is to it. It's, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, let's take a quick look at it and just to see what that looks like in case you did miss the other video. Okay, so I'm just going to click on it here. You see it just kind of appears in the middle, and if I click on this button here. Um, there's a couple other things. Let's take a look at how this button actually works, because there's, there's a few other things here. Uh, so one thing, the Got It button here, it's going to close the dialog when we click it. And so it's, it's really just as simple. It's just a, a preset here. So uh, we have this click here, and uh, we can look at the code. It's really pretty straightforward. It's basically just doing a hide. This is the, the code that's generated when you drag it out there. We, we automatically have those actions already assigned uh, when we actually drag the, 
or I'm sorry, when we, we create the new page, the pop-up page, it's going to have these uh, this part already set there. So it's just widget root visible equals false. So it's just hiding it away there. Um, so it's very very slick. To launch it, let's take a look at the go back to the pop-ups page here. And here on our notifications button, we can take a look at that. And so what it's doing is, if we scroll down to the on click, it's just one of the default actions. So we just scroll down here in the default actions list and we choose show pop-up. That's it, it's really simple. Uh, we'll also have to select the page and so like this is the notifications dialog. We just click that one and it's set. So it's super simple to open. Uh, if you were implementing that somewhere else in your code, uh, where you don't have uh, the selector to, to choose what it's doing. Uh, it's, it's just this code here, so it's, it's also really simple here. You're just finding the pop-ups called notification dialog and then setting it to visible. Uh, I did notice that when, when I was working on this, and, and it's probably still here, this bug is probably going to be fixed really soon, um, but we, we do the uh, P for page, we don't see pop-ups there. Uh, but it does work if you just if you uh, if you would just copy and paste it in there. We should see this actually showing up in the autocomplete soon. Um, so um, you can just remember that this is the this is the format it would take if you were to put it somewhere in your code. All right, so let's move on to the next one, which is this loading type of spinner. So same thing here, and, and these buttons are all the same. Uh, these three buttons anyway are the same. Where I've just chose the the show. Um, the show pop up and then and then chose which one it was. Uh, so uh, really simple on those three. I won't I won't go into any more detail about those. Uh, but let's take a look at this loading spinner because it's kind of cool. There it is, model loading. And so what it does is it's just I mean, it's pretty basic. It does <laughs> there's not much to see there. It does have a an eye, kind of the icon right here in the middle. Um, it's the spinner. It's actually the spinner widget is what it is. And so you could actually, and, and probably what I would do is I would, I would add a little bit more CSS to make it a little bit thicker. So it's, it's like the, the loading one you see there. Um, I don't have the CSS right now, but, but I'll, I can post that later in the comments. And so if we go back to the base of the page here, we can see that it also has the different settings for, for moving it around the screen if we want to, if we really wanted to have it up at the top instead, because that made more sense to us, and we could put it up there. Uh, so we can move it around the screen in different areas. Uh, and then it has the same kinds of, of staying. So clicking outside to close, probably, I, this is an interesting one, I'm not sure, because it does cover the whole screen. So I'm not really sure exactly how that's going to work. I haven't tried it yet. Um, it, it seems like a strange place for that, but uh, navigate to close. Um, uh, again, maybe if the app's navigating for us, that might change something, but there's not going to be anything to click on because it disables the whole screen. So that might be why we also see these as disabled because they're just, you know, maybe some remnants of the, the way the editor works here. Uh, obviously has glass, um, and that might maybe make some sense there is it might take the glass away. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, and then, of course, escape to close. Uh, animations, we can have it fade in or it can kind of come across kind of like a screen uh, kind of effect by, by choosing some of the other uh, in and out styles. So basically the use case here is we're going to launch this thing when we do some kind of activity that is taking some processing time but we don't want the users to be able to click away from the page or click a button that they shouldn't uh, without having to disable those buttons, we can just throw up this loading screen with the glass on there. They'll see that something's loading. They'll see that the app still is back behind there, and it maybe is even doing something uh, behind there, but they can't actually make any changes. So that, that way you can prevent them from you know, basically jumping into the middle of a workflow and starting off something before what you had going on was finished. So it's really nice to be able to have that and just kind of pop it up there. Um, let's move over to the next one here. So uh, another area that is really uh, great for us to use here is the snack bar. Uh, it's really kind of a cool widget, and it has a nice look to it. That's that's one of the things I like most about it is it. You see this in in a lot of the Google apps, and it just kind of pops up there to give you some kind of a notification. And it's just because it kind of slides up from the bottom, and, and that's where you, you also see these come down from the top as well. And that is really um, 
really kind of cool because you can set yours to come in from the top or the bottom or the center. It has the same kinds of orientation. So uh, you may want it to be in the center, more in the center of the page. I know it doesn't look that way, but that's just because my screen's kind of short. Uh, or you can put it up at the top and, and have it slide down from the top. So you might see that like it may be in a, you could put a warning in here or something and even change the background to like red or something like that so that it shows a warning for people. But it'll slide down from from wherever you want it. Um, I do I do like it at the bottom. Um, the the horizontal, of course, is controlling. Let me get it back in view here. The horizontal is controlling, you know, kind of where where it's at. It can be on either side, uh, so you can basically top, bottom, center, move it into you know what nine different spots or something like that. Um, so it's kind of cool. And then it also has the same kinds of. Uh, ways of closing it so click somewhere outside of it navigate to close it or you know it, you could have glass here probably wouldn't see that very often where glass because this is more of a notification for the user to see um, and then of course escape uh, to close it um, and it has the same kind of dismiss button that we've seen on uh, like the got it one that I showed you before it has that that same kind of dismiss where we're just um, doing this on click uh, with the widget root visible equals false and um, that's right here in this hide pop-up you can just select that and it'll it'll give you a it'll close it for you uh, so no coding involved there I'll just quickly go back and look and see if there was any other oh the animations right so you know if you're coming from the top if you did put it up at the top you'd probably want to use the from top so it slides down from the top um, you can use some of the other ones and they create some very interesting interactions like if you do right or left and you have it sitting at the bottom or the top then it kind of like slides in from the side a little bit which can kind of look cool but um, having it just kind of pop up like some toast or something. They actually used to have a feature in, in, in uh, spreadsheets it's called toast is the app script term for it and it kind of slides up from the bottom like this so kind of nice uh, to see that. All right, and so the next one, which actually has some more uh, some more to do with it. So this is the confirmation dialog, and let's actually go back and start uh, over here at the at the pop-ups page. And so what we see here is I've, I've implemented it here in the delete button. So the delete button used to be just delete item, and because that you know would of course give us the the delete function and, and delete the record immediately. We don't want to see that. What we really want to see is this the show confirmation. So, so this is just going to open it. So we're just going to do show pop-up and then we're going to say confirmation dialog and that will just open our dialog for us. And we'll go in depth a little bit more here. We'll load up the confirmation dialog. Get it in view here. And so the cancel button is the same thing we've been seeing. It's just that cancel where it just it just cancels and uh, closes the dialog. But this one here is a little bit different. Now it starts off with some automatic code and of course I changed the text here so that it had something else to say. Um, the default text is something completely different. Um, so we wanted to click on this uh, delete forever and we'll take a look at the custom action here. And so I added this line two and it would, would normally just have the line three which will just close it again, but I wanted to actually do something which I wanted to close the dialog. And so there's a couple things I had to do here. So the first thing was to obviously put in the widget.datasource.delete item, which is going to delete the currently selected item. And that's fine since I was clicking on the the delete but the delete icon in the row, that row is already selected. So deleting the item from the data source, that's the currently selected one. That's just going to delete it and that works great. Uh, the other thing I did have to do though is I had to set the, um, I had to go to the, the content uh, panel right here uh, in the breadcrumbs. And I had to set the data source to the same data source as my page. And so you, you might have, there might be some other ways of doing that. Um, one of the ways I would like to see that is to have it just inherit the base page. Um, but it doesn't quite seem to do that. So, um, so we'll, we'll be looking into that more, but the, the easy way to do it is just to set it the same as your, your, di as your page data source, uh, in this case example, my, my table on the page, page is set for example, so it's just going to delete the same record, and that works really well. So you do have to set that up. 
The last menu here that, and I'm actually going to give a little demonstration of some of the other things we can do here, but let's take a look at it first, is this navigation menu. And so it's, it, you know, it's really nice. When you create it, it's going to actually fill a list here with all the different pages you have. I only have one page called pop-up, so just put one in here. But when you create it, it's just going to fill this list up with the different navigation links. Now you can of course do different things and, and up here um, the default one I think is blue and it has like the user email address and username here. I replaced it with a, a logo so you can, you can customize this as much as you want on the face of it. Um, you just want to leave the base part um, alone but it has of course you know we're back to having all the same kind of controls here for centering it. Uh, this is really nice though because we can put it on the right side if we wanted to. Uh, move it over here to the right, and then we, of course, probably want to change the animation to from right, so that it would move there. And I, I've got something I want to show you here in a little bit, so I'm actually going to move it back over to the left. So, But you could have a slide in from either side, and that's kind of nice um, from the animation standpoint. Not really a whole lot else there. Uh, you can customize it with different widgets and things like that, like, like, like I was showing you here. Okay, so that's how those work. Uh, let's go ahead and launch the editor again, and I'll show you just each one of them actually functioning. So loading um, this one here, you can see I'm just going to click all over the screen, and I can't do anything until I hit the escape key, and now I'm back to where I can I can start selecting records. Um, snacks just pops right up there from the bottom. Looks really cool. Uh, and then if I click my menu key over here, it's just going to open it up from the side. Um, okay, and then I can close that. Uh, oh, the other one we have here is, uh, I'll just go ahead and delete this navigation menu one here. We hit delete forever, and that removes it. So those are all the basic actions you're going to do. I'm going to walk through putting together one of the menu items now, so you can see how that navigation menu works. Um, but we're going to put a little bit different information in it, so that you can see that it's, you know, it's really fully customizable. So we start with the pages here, and we're going to click on pop-ups. Next. And then we want to use the navigation menu. We're going to hit create, and that's going to create our new page. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to just set this one over to right, so it's on the right hand side of the screen. Um, I'm going to get rid of the username here. Uh, I'm just going to set that to a value. Let's call it record details. Uh, and we'll just get rid of this. Just delete this. Uh, get selected. Just delete that. And then, all right, so I'm just going to remove this pop up options completely from there. So now we just have this blank space here. And what I want to do now is I'm going to go over the widget panel and I'm going to grab a form and I'm just going to take it over here and drop it into this vertical panel here. Okay. Click next. I want this to be an edit type form. And I want to see that ID, and then I want both the edit fields checked, so I can use those. Click Finish here, and it's going to generate our form. And then I'm just going to get rid of a couple of the different auto-generated um, items on the form. And this label here, and the navigation at the bottom. Okay, so now we basically have a way to display um, our records here on the screen here. Okay, now I just need a way to open this up so that we can see the record details. So what I'll do is I'll go back over to the pop-ups page and I'm going to drag a button out here. Drop it right here. And I'll change it to an icon. And then I just need to add a little bit of a, a label here so we can see what that is. I'll just copy this and paste it right in the same spot. Clear the binding. Type edit. And so now I'll set my on click to show pop. Oops. To uh, show pop up. And we're going to choose the navigation menu one which is the one we just created. All right, let's take a look at the preview. All right, so now everything's loaded, and we can go ahead and let's click on this loading 
icon here and we get the animation. Oh, and I noticed that it kind of came in in kind of a strange way. So let's just go back and fix that quickly. We'll just run back over here. Uh, what that is, is is in the menu item, we need to set that animation to come in. So because it's on the right hand side, we want to make sure that our animation, it still works obviously, but it looked like it kind of ran across the screen there and that's not really the effect I want. I actually want it to kind of slide in from the right hand side there. So let's click preview again. All right, so here it's loaded up and we'll just click on this pencil here and you can see it just kind of nicely slides in from the right hand side there. You can see we have record two. Um, and when we click here, it's going to go away and we can then bring it back out and now we can view record number four and see that. And so if we're clicking off of it or we're closing, it has that feature. Now you might want it to stay open the whole time. And so the way we do that, and this is where we can see where we have some of these other settings. So we could take off the has glass here and we could also take off the click outside uh, to take that, and we, we can remove navigate too. Uh, we'll leave the escape because it, we're probably not going to be hitting the escape key. Uh, or if we do want to hit the escape key, we could do that. But uh, let's give it a quick preview for that. And so now when we bring out a record, it slides in from the side, and here's the selected record we have. If we had a longer record here, we'd be able to scroll down through it and see all the different fields. Uh, so it kind of gives you that Google Drive kind of effect. If you did have a list of records here, you could see that. And the nice thing here, because we took the glass off and we took the click outside off, now when we click over here, it's just going to update the record. It's not going to make it go away. So we can go through and we can view each record and we'd be able to kind of scroll through our list and see that. And uh, it makes a nice way to be able to view some of the other details without you know throwing a uh, dialog up in the middle of the screen that would maybe obscure the other data you have. So. Uh, works really nice and then you can just close it by clicking on the, the close zero. So very similar to what you do see in Drive. So really easy way to make that and you saw I was just you know really just creating the new menu, setting up some of its default uh, or some of its actions to do there and then just you know throwing a, a form widget in there and making it look a little bit more uh, like what should be there. So really easy to work with. Uh, I really love these new pop-ups. Uh, I know that you're going to have a whole lot of fun using them. Uh, make sure you subscribe to all our videos and uh, you know visit us at appmakeruniversity.com where we're going to be just continually bringing out more and more information about this. We've got the new template library where you can download templates. I've got a really exciting one coming up here that shows you how to do OAuth. Uh, going to be really great for bringing in data like Slack, which is what our template example is going to be all about. So uh, it's going to be really cool. Stay tuned, come back, uh, and enjoy these new pop-ups. Thanks for watching.